All right, guys, there we have our Firefly for the Canadian Forces group build. I do, uh, I use a Vallejo surface primer. This is black, and I do the whole thing black to uh, kill basically two birds with one stone my pre shading, shadowing, and priming. I don't know what the difference between the primer and the regular Vallejo is, but this stuff certainly does stick a lot better. And it uh, it's not as um, doesn't sand much better, but it certainly is a lot. It's a little tougher than the regular Vallejo, so I'll be using the um, Surface Primer UK Bronze Green for this, just to use something different other than olive drab because it's hard to tell in black and white. But some of the pictures don't look olive drab, US olive drab. So we're going to use the Bronze Green just to give it a little bit different color. A little different tonal variety. And uh, the tracks were a bugger, but uh, it comes out pretty nice. Just a few little photo etch pieces on it here and there. And uh, I'm liking this. We'll see what she looks like when we get a coat of paint on her. Okay, here's the Sherman Firefly for the uh, Heroes, Fallen Heroes group build I'm doing with Storm and Norm 20, and Storm 22 and Norm. Schweinhund 227. It's uh honoring Canadian veterans. So here's my Firefly. It's all done up. It's got the basic uh, bronze green on it. And I've used uh, Vallejo Surface Primer Bronze Green Thin Down about 25% with uh, Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. And it's sprayed on just lovely. Uh, I like the um, the primer stuff much better than their model air. It's tougher. It goes on smoother. It doesn't spit. It doesn't clog. I like it. I like it. Like I said, I like it a lot better. So we've got the uh, basic um, Firefly here. We've got some stowage on the back. We've got to start getting in there and get the detail painting done and all that kind of good stuff. It's got a little bit of photo etch on it, which I normally don't do, but I figured for this one, let's rock out some photo etch. Okay, guys, quick question. I need to know. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna. I'll probably just check on my online, but I'm pretty sure that these were these were rubber backed. They weren't metal on metal. I'm pretty sure they were rubber. So I'll paint them out rubber. I see I've got a little bit of little schmeg right there i got to clean up. So anyway, there you have it. We've got it on some color on it, and I am loving it. Well, here's my Firefly for the Hero Canadian Heroes group build. This will be a South Alberta Regiment. I've done some, I've hand-painted the... Um, Camouflage on the 17-pounder. Uh, one side did. This side turned out, I think, a little bit better than the other. But they're equal. They're all, I don't mind either side. They look pretty good. I've uh, painted out the um, Pioneer tools, uh, the stowage on it, the German jerry cans, the cleaning rods, and I did two different style of uh, fire extinguishers on here. And as you can see, this one here is the gloss green, British manufacturer. And this is the red, which was, I understand, Canadian manufacturer. So I just thought I'd add a little zip of color, you know, the uh, bed rolls and a little bit of camouflage on the barrel. And uh, a red uh, fire extinguisher, just add a little bit of color. So there you have it, guys. We've got to give this a shot of future and then put a few decals on it and then start to weathering. Later. Okay, we're weathering down this Firefly. And I've gone, I've decided to go with a satin on this. The high gloss was too glossy, but the flat was just too lifeless and dead. So I did a 50-50 of um, gloss and flat. It just got a tiny little bit of sheen like the real thing does. So I, I kind of like that. So what we're doing is the, the um, I don't know, it's fading, a dot fade. Um, it's kind of a filter. It's a different way of doing a filter. A lot of the filters you uh, were, were familiar with was, say, these, um, these uh, the filters from, uh, from MIG. And um, they're pretty good, but sometimes you don't get exactly what you want. So what I'm doing here is using an oil an oil paint. I've got a, um, what have I got? I've got uh, Aberlung Wash Brown, Buff, Field Gray, and White. And I'm just putting it down on a little, um, little dots. Uh, I've already done this, this uh, rear, um, sorry guys. I've done this cover here. So you just take a little bit of odorless thinner. I'm using this incredibly stupid MIG stuff. Incredibly expensive. I shouldn't say incredibly stupid. It's excellent, but 
at twelve friggin ninety five for a small bottle, but filters for it's um this is what I'm using here thinner for washes, and I've been nursing that for about the last three years. So we put that on and then you take your brush, a wide brush, and then you just kind of work it. Um, Panzerman Bill did one. The Panzerman Bunker did a really nice job. I can't remember what he was doing it on, but he showed this technique here a while back. So I'm just showing you some of the first steps of weathering this. Basically you want to get you work everything just about all right completely off. So you don't want to leave it met like the way it looks now. You just keep working it in. And if you have to, just kind of clean your brush off. And you just kind of work it into the... This is a really... This is almost a little, maybe a little bit too glossy of a surface. A super smooth surface this isn't the easiest to do it on. So we'll just carry on doing it here like this, guys, and I'll get the rest of the hull done up and I'll show you how it looks. Okay, here's a tip, guys, when you're doing this uh, dot type weathering, especially on a big flat surface like the side uh, slab side of the Sherman. Start with your darker colors down on the bottom and then work your way up. So I've got the wash brown on the bottom. I've got the field green, and then I've got the buff, and I've got the white on top. So, sorry, I'm talking with a toothbrush in my toothbrush. Paintbrush in my mouth. So what we want to do here, guys, is we want to take the uh, brush and go down like this. So what you're doing is you're also creating some shadows as well. So where it's going to be a little bit... Uh, a little bit brighter up top, a little bit higher. It's almost like a color modulation where you're adding in highlights at the top and then the lower down you get it's going to be a little bit darker. Anyway, that's my that's my story and I'm sticking with it. You don't want to use a whole bunch of whole bunch of thinner but as you can see here where it's starting to the white starting to overwhelm things we'll just go back and grab a little bit of thinner damp it off damp it off on a piece of uh, blue shop towel or some paper towel or something and then just go back you don't you want to keep your brush not quite dry but just enough thinner in it to remove everything to give it some nice get that good streaking effect and that really worn I, I don't want this this is going to go into Operation Blockbuster which was the um, crossing of the Rhine I believe I'll have to check my references but unfortunately this time of the year in uh, western Germany where they were at it was mucky and rainy and lots of mud but I really don't want to encase this in mud so I've got a couple of ideas of how I'm going to put it without, you know, showing a little bit of mud but not getting the tank just schmegged right up. I, I, I like a cleaner tank, especially this one. This is coming out really, I'm really happy with the way this is starting to look here. So, anyway, um, quick uh, overview what I got to at this point, of course, we've we painted it in the um, Vallejo Bronze Green, black primer first. Everything black primer, then we sprayed the Vallejo Bronze Green on it. We let that set up for a day. Then we gave it a good coat of uh, Future or Clear, it's called now. Uh, you need to let that sit for two or three days before you put your decals on, or you will get fogging of your decals if you're using a fairly strong decal solution. So make sure you let your Future cure. There's a difference between being dry to the touch and cured. It must be cured or else you're going to get, you will get some uh, ghosting and some really ugly... Um, fading and it, it looks pretty bad. You'll as soon as you see it, you'll know. But the nice thing is, usually when you put another shot of clear on it, it will cl it cleans itself up. So we've done that. Um, after we put the decals on, we put another coat of clear on it. Then we did all the uh, the pin washes, all the detail pin washes, and then we put a coat of uh, satin on it, which I did this morning. And now we're getting onto the fading because you can't do a fading 
or any type of fading or filters or anything on a glossy surface. A glossy surface for pin washes, do the detail washes, but for fading and filters you have to have a semi or a flat gloss to get this nice to get this nice weathered look.